everybody, we're back. This is Dave Vellante with theCUBE. We're here talking storage at Amazon in Boston. Asa Calaveda is here. She's the general manager for hybrid and data transfer services. Let me give you a perspective of how these services come together. We have data Great. sync, storage, gateway, and transfer as a set of um, hybrid and data transfer services. So the problem that we are trying to address for customers is how to connect their on-premises infrastructure to the cloud. And we have customers at different stages of their journey to the cloud. Some are just starting out to use the cloud, some are migrating, and others have migrated, but they still need access to the cloud from on-prem. So the broad charter for these services is to enable customers to use AWS storage from on-premises. So for example, a storage gateway today is used by customers to get um, unlimited access to cloud storage from on-premises. And they can do that with low latencies, so they can run their on-prem workloads, but still leverage storage in the cloud. Um, in addition to that, we have Data Sync, which we launched at reInvent last year right. in 2018. And Data Sync essentially is designed to help customers move a lot of their on premises storage to the cloud and back and, back and forth for workloads that are involve replication, migration, or ongoing data transfers. So, together, Gateway and Data Sync help solve the access and transfer problem for customers. Okay, and let's double down on the, on the benefits because you, you started this segment just sort of describing the problem that you're solving, connecting on-prem to cloud, sort of helping create these hybrid in, environments. And, right. and so that's really the other benefit for customers. You're really simplifying that sort of hybrid approach, giving them high performance, confidence that it actually worked. Right, <laughs> exactly. So maybe talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, so with Data Sync, we see two broad use cases. There is a class of customers that have adopted Data Sync for migration. So we have customers like Autodesk who've migrated um, hundreds of terabytes from their on-premises storage to AWS. And that has allowed them to shut down their data center or retire their existing storage because they're in their journey to the cloud. Um, the other class of use cases is customers that have ongoing data that they need to move to the cloud for a workload. So it could be data from uh, video cameras or gene sequencers that they need to move to a data pipeline in the cloud and they can do further processing there and in some cases bring the results back. So that's the second continuous data transfer use case uh, that Data Sync allows customers to um, address. Right. Right. Okay, you're also uh, talking today about storage gateway, high availability version of right. storage gateway. What's behind that? So um, storage gateway today is used by customers um, to get access to data in the cloud from on-premises. So if we continue this migration story that I mentioned with Data Sync, now you have a customer that has moved a large amount of data to the cloud. Uh, they can now access that same data from on-premises um, for latency reasons or if they need to um, distribute data across organizations and so on. So that's where the gateway comes into play. So today we have tens of thousands of customers that are using gateway to uh, do their backups, do archiving, or in some cases, um, use it as a target to replace their on-premises uh, storage with cloud-backed storage. So a lot of these customers are running business-critical applications today. But then some of our customers have told us they want to do additional workloads that are uninterruptible, so they cannot tolerate uh, downtime. So with that requirement in mind, we are launching this new capability around high availability. And we're quite excited because that's solving yet, allowing customers to do even more workloads um, on, on the gateway. And this announcement will allow customers to have um, a fully, uh, highly available gateway in a VMware uh, environment. And with that, their workloads can continue running even if one of the gateways uh, goes down, if they have a hardware failure, a networking uh, event, or software errors such as um, uh, you know, the file shares becoming unavailable, the gateway automatically restarts, so the workloads remain uninterrupted. So, talk a little bit more about how it works, just in terms of, are there anything customers have to do, any prerequisites they have, how does it all fit? So, customers essentially can use this in their VMware HA environment today. So, they would deploy their gateway much like they do today. They can download the gateway from the um, AWS console. If they have an existing gateway, the software gets updated, so it, they can take advantage of the high availability feature as well. And they, the gateway integrates into the VMware HA environment. Um, it, it builds up a number of health checks, so we keep monitoring for the application uptime, network uptime, and so on. And if there is an event, the, um, the health check gets communicated back to VMware and the gateway gets restarted within 
uh, in most typical cases, under 60 seconds. So, so customers um, that are VMware customers can take advantage of this, and to, to them it's very non-disruptive, it sounds like. Is That's that right? right. That's one of the benefits. But maybe talk about some of the other benefits. Yeah, so we saw that a large number of our on-premises customers, especially in the enterprise environments, use VMware today. Mm -hmm. And they're using VMware HA for a number of their other applications. So we wanted to plug into that environment so the gateway is as well highly available, so all their applications just work um, in that same framework. And then along with high availability, we are also introducing two additional capabilities. One is real-time reports and visibility into uh, the gateway's resource consumption. So customers can now see embedded CloudWatch graphs on how is their storage being consumed, what's their cache utilization, what's the network utilization. And then the administrators can use that to, uh, in fairly real time, adapt the resources that they've allocated to the gateway. So with that, as their workloads change, they can continue to uh, adapt their gateway resources so they're getting the maximum performance out of the gateway. So if they see a performance problem and it's a high priority, they can put more resources on it? They can put more it. storage, attach, attach more storage to it or move it to a higher um, resourced uh, VM and they can continue to get the performance they need. So it's, previously they could still do that but they had to ha have uh, manual checks. Now this is all automated, we can get this in a single pane of control and they can use the AWS console today like they do for their in-cloud workloads. They can use that to look at performance of their on-premises gateways as well. So it's one pane of control, they can get CloudWatch health um, reports on their uh, infrastructure on-prem. And of course it's cloud, so I consume this as a service, I pay for it when I use it, I don't have to install any infrastructure, right? Yeah, so the gateway is uh, again uh, consumption based, much like all AWS services. You download the gateway, it doesn't cost you anything. And we charge um, one, cents, uh, one cent per gigabyte of data transferred through the gateway and it's capped at $125 a month. Uh, and you just pay for whatever storage is consumed by the gateway. Well, it's of course, you know, when you talk to senior execs like Andy Jassy, he always says, well, it's, we, we focus on the customers, and sometimes people roll their eyes, but it's true. This is a hybrid world. Years ago, you didn't hear really much talk about hybrid. You talk to your customers and say, hey, we want to connect our on-prem to the public cloud. You're bringing services to do that. Asus, so, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Appreciate it. Thank you, thanks for your time. You're welcome, and thank you for watching, everybody. This is Dave Vellante with theCUBE. We'll be back right after this short break. <laughs>